Now that we've got the turret placement working correctly, let's move on to the next stage and add animations. If I go into this assets folder and have a look at the turret images down here, you'll see that actually the turret images are in the sprite sheet. So what we've got here is every frame of the animation stacked up next to the one before it. So how do we use this sprite sheet for animating our turrets? Well, the approach here is first of all to load in the entire sprite sheet and then to extract each of the individual frames into their own image. Once we have all those frames, we can organize them together into a list. Then, by quickly cycling through each of the still images in that list, we can create the appearance of animation. We'll make a start by going into our main file and loading in the turret sprite sheet. This is where I load in that individual turret for the cursor. But before I do that, I will add another little comment to say turret sprite sheets. And for now, we're just going to load in one, even though you might have noticed that there's four different turret sprite sheets in here. We'll say turret underscore sheet is equal to, and then I'm just going to copy the code from below that we use for loading in the other turret. The only change here is to remove this section at the start and then call it turret underscore one. Now, when we create an instance of the turret, instead of passing in the individual image, we can pass in that sprite sheet. So we go down to this create turret function and down here is where we create an instance of the turret. So I'll replace that first argument and now it's going to become turret underscore sheet. Now we can go into the turret class and update it to receive this sprite sheet instead of the image. So this changes to sprite underscore sheet. And I'm also going to expand this section a little bit, so I'm going to organize them first of all. I'll add a space here and a comment to say position variables. And then I'm going to break out the image and the rectangle below, because now we're going to be changing the image dynamically. I'll have a section here that says animation variables. And the first one is to save that sprite sheet into a self variable. So we'll say that self.spritesheet is equal to sprite sheet. Next, we will create this animation list. So we'll create a variable called animation underscore list. And this is where we're going to extract each individual frame from the sprite sheet and store it inside this list. So I'll create it as an empty list for now. And to be able to extract the individual images from the sprite sheet, I'm going to create an additional method. We'll call this method load underscore images, and it doesn't need to take any arguments except for self. I will add a comment to explain what this method does, which is to extract images from sprite sheet. To be able to pick these images out of that sheet, we first of all need to know how big each of the images is. If we go back to the picture again, the way these sprite sheets are typically laid out is that each frame is in a perfect square, which means that if we know the height of the sprite sheet, we also know how wide each of the squares is going to be. That means that first of all, we need to work out the height of this image. We go back into our load images method and we'll define a variable called size. We'll take that sprite sheet image, which will be self.spritesheet, and we will use the get underscore height method. Next, we will create a temporary animation list inside here. So we'll set this to an empty list as well. Now we can start iterating through each of the frames in that sprite sheet. I'll say for x in range. And this is where I need to know how many frames this sprite sheet actually has. If we go back to the image, we can see that it's got eight frames. And I'm actually going to save that variable inside our constants file. I'll come down here and add another section to say turret constants. And the one we want for now is animation underscore steps. And this is equal to eight. Next, we go back into the turret class. And in this range, we will pass in C dot animation steps. With each iteration of this for loop, we want to extract one of those frames. We'll save it in a variable called temp underscore IMG. And this will be taken from self dot sprite sheet using the sub surface method. You can think of this subsurface as a small square that we can use to extract a section of the image. So the first two arguments are going to be the coordinate of the square, where it begins, so the top left coordinate. Well, the x coordinate is going to be changing because we move along to the right each frame. So we'll say x multiplied by size, and the y coordinate is always going to be zero because we start at the top of the image. And then we need to define a width and height of the subsurface. Well, the width and height of each frame is going to be this size variable because it's going to be a square. I can pass size for both of those variables. And lastly, once I've extracted this temporary image, 
I can append it into our temporary animation list. So I'll say append temp underscore image. Once this for loop is completely finished, we're going to be left with this animation list. So I need to return this back out of this method. I'll say return animation list. Now I can go back up here where I initially defined this self animation list. And instead of creating it as just an empty list, I can actually call that method now. So I can say that it's equal to self dot load underscore images. Now, instead of an image for this turret, we've got a list of images. So when this turret is first created, how do we know what we should display? Well, the first image in this spreadsheet is the idle image. So it's kind of the way the turret begins. The rest of them are the shooting animation. But if we want to first create an instance of the turret, we should be using this image. And that image is going to be at index zero in our list. We can go back into the turret class and continue with these animation variables. The next one is going to be self.frame underscore index. This is the index that is going to allow us to choose each of the frames in the animation. So to begin with, it's going to be zero. We begin with the very first image in that list. Now we can update this self.image section because we no longer have an individual image to assign this to. We have to go into our animation list and from there we need to access the index of self.frame index. And the next two lines will stay the same. So this section I'll add a comment to and this will be the update image section. Now we should be able to test this and see if we can place these turrets. So I can place the turrets just as I did before but the difference now is that we're placing them using the sprite sheet and it's still giving us that first still image. Now we can have a look at how to animate the turret. We'll need to define a new constant variable here and this one is going to be animation underscore delay and I'll set this to 15 milliseconds. This variable is going to control the time in between each of the frames. So the longer the time, the slower the animation will go. This also means that we need to know when the turret was first created so that we know when the animation timer starts. We go down to this animation variables bit and I add another variable called self.update underscore time. And for this, we'll say pg.time.get underscore ticks. This basically just takes a timestamp at the moment that this turret is created. And since this is a turret class, every turret will have its own timestamp. Now we can use these variables to play the actual animation. We'll go down here and define a new method. We'll say def play underscore animation. And it doesn't need any arguments, so we just pass self. To start with in the animation, we want to make sure that we update the image to the latest one. So I'm going to add a comment to say update image. And the code here is going to be the same as what I do when I first assign the image. So I can just copy that down here. Then we need to know if enough time has passed since the last frame was changed. So we'll add a comment here. Check if enough time has passed since the last update. We'll take the current time by saying fpg.time.get ticks. So just what we did a second ago. And then we subtract our last update time. So the first time this runs, it's actually going to be the initial creation of the turret. If that is greater than this animation delay variable that we just created, so it's animation underscore delay, well, that means that enough time has now passed and we can move on to the next frame. First, we will change this variable update time so that we can reset the counter. So pg.time.get underscore ticks. And next we increase that frame index. So we'll increase this by one and this will allow it to move onto the next frame in that list. We can now put this inside an update method. So I'll create another method here called update, pass the argument of self, and I will just call self.play animation. And to call this method, we go back into the main loop and we'll look for the section where I've divided it into update and draw. And in this update section, just after I update the enemy groups, I will update the turret groups. So I'll say turret group dot update. We can now run this and place down one turret. Now we get an error straight away. The error was intentional, but it happened a little bit too quickly. So we go back into constants just temporarily, and I'm going to increase this animation delay to 150. You don't need to do this, but it's just to demonstrate what's going on. So I'm going to place a turret down again, and then you can see it walking through its animation steps. So it does go frame by frame in slow motion. And then we get this error at the end. So if we track this error and we go back into the turret class, it's running from this play animation method 
and it's actually triggering here. The error itself says that the list index is out of range. Well, that actually makes sense because every time we move through this animation, we update the frame index by one. Eventually though, we're going to get to a point where we've gone beyond the length of this list. So our turret animation has eight frames in it, but eventually this will go on to the frame that doesn't exist. It will try to load that from the list and it will get this error. That means that what we need to do here is add an additional check at the comment. So check if the animation has finished and reset to idle. We'll say if self.frameIndex, that variable that has just increased by one, if that variable is greater than or equal to the length of that animation list, well, then that means that we've come to the end of the animation. So we need to reset back to zero. I'll say self frame index is equal to zero. If we go back and run this again, and I place down a turret, it runs through its animation and then it just repeats. So it goes over and over again. So we've now fixed that error and the turret is now in a loop. It's going very slowly though. So I'm gonna go back to the constants and set this back to 15 as it should be. And if I run it again, it's going to shoot a lot faster. So that's more of a machine gun, but you can see it's running through the animation very quickly. The next thing I like to do is add a little bit of a cooldown because we don't want this turret just firing constantly like this. The game would be far too easy. We go back into the turret class and right at the beginning, we'll create a couple more variables. The first one will be self.cooldown. And I'm going to manually enter this for now as 1500. As the game develops, we will call this in from somewhere else because it will depend on the type of turret. But for now, I'll just define it manually in here. And then I also need to know the time of the last shot that was fired. So again, I'm just going to use pg.time.get underscore ticks. Now we go into the update method. And this section or this logic is actually going to be very similar to how we handle the animation. We'll say search for new target once turret has cooled down. And I just add another timer check. So I'll take the current time. So pg time dot get underscore ticks. If that minus self dot last shot. So the last time we fired is greater than our cooldown. Then that means that the turret has cooled down and it's ready to fire again. So we play that animation. But when the animation is fully finished, we need to record that that's finished and we now need to start the cooldown. The animation is complete in this section here, this if statement. We can just expand it a little bit to say record completed time and clear target so cooldown can begin. We'll say self.lastshot is equal to pg.time.get underscore ticks. If we run this again, we should now be able to place down a turret, it will fire, and then it will cool down and it will fire again. And notice that if I place a few different turrets, the time that I place them at is going to be different for each one. So they all fire at different intervals. 